Today we're here at Longley in Wiltshire where we've been invited by Panasonic to come and take a look at one of their latest compact system cameras, the Panasonic Lumix GX7. This camera sits above the GX1 which was launched two years ago and it's a camera that features a lot more features than its predecessor. We're going to take a look at these and find out how they work in this first look video. What's really interesting about the GX7 is it features a brand new sensor that hasn't been seen on any previous Panasonic compact system cameras. It does share the same resolution as some of the other cameras, it's 16 megapixel. However, it also features a brand new image processor, the Venus Engine Type. This allows the camera to shoot from 60 seconds right through to 1 8,000th of a second, much like you'd find on a typical DSLR. The other advantage of the new processor allows the camera to shoot between an ISO range of 200 and 25,600. It also allows the camera to shoot at up to 5 frames per second or 4.2 frames per second in its AF tracking mode. Great for fast action sequences and the high ISO limit is fantastic when you want to push that sensitivity up in low light situations. The advantage of having this high ISO range just allows you to crank it up when you want to freeze movement such as this fountain here. We can see we've got the movement of the fountain. I want to capture each drop, so I'm going to just increase the ISO range up a bit from 400. I'm going to push it up to around 6400. And I'm just going to capture a few shots here. And if we zoom right into the action, we can just see that if we just zoom into the image, we've captured all those pin sharp drops there. Two features that are really going to appeal to Panasonic GX7 users are that of its electronic viewfinder and tilting screen at the rear. The electronic viewfinder has a 2.7 million dot resolution, a fantastic resolution that gives it a really crisp and clear view when you use it. And the same can be said for the screen. It just tilts very, very easily. You can just tilt it up and you can tilt it down for when you're shooting at high and low angles. And just something else that I should mention as well is that the EVF just above it does have an eye sensor. So when you do raise the camera from the screen to your eye and vice versa, it will automatically switch between the two. There are a number of different AF modes available. Just by clicking the left hand button on the D-pad loads these. And as well as face detection, you've got AF tracking, 23 area AF, as well as one area AF. But also, if you just go across to the far right, there's also pinpoint AF. To use pinpoint AF, you just simply just double tap on your subject, and then that offers the magnified view from which you can then zoom in just using the scroll dial up on the top of the camera. As you can see, I'm just zooming in to six times, but if you do want to zoom in further than six times, just hit this little button down at the bottom of the screen, and then that will allow you in just to zoom in as far as 10 times. So it's a really good magnified view uh, just to check your focus before you confirm and fire the shutter. Much like Panasonic's other compact system cameras, the GX7 adopts light speed AF for very fast AF acquisition. Using the GX7 at this test event gave us a chance to just find out how fast it really is, and it does lock on at very impressive speed. The other advantage of having the touchscreen, of course, means that you can just pinpoint the AF point right across any area of the frame. And it's very easy to use, just simply touch the screen and it just focuses there almost immediately. Another advantage of the GX7 is that it has inbuilt image stabilization, and this means that it could be used with other lenses, such as those produced by Olympus, and that will just allow you to just make sure that you have got some form of image stabilization if you're not using Panasonic's optical image stabilized lenses. The design of the GX7 is quite different to that of the GX1. First of all, it's quite a bit bigger, so when you do pick it up, you'll notice that it's actually a little bit heavier as well. Of course, you do have the EVF and the screen, which is slightly different to the GX1, but the arrangement of buttons is quite dissimilar to what we've seen before. Although you've got the D-pad at the back, you've got some other buttons, such as the, uh, the pop-up flash here up at the top. You can just hit the uh, electronic viewfinder button there just to flick between if you don't want to use the eye sensor. Up on the top plate, you've also got two scroll dials, whereas you only have one on the GX1. For those who'd like to shoot video as well as stills, the GX7 shoots full HD video at 60p and 50p, and there's a fantastic range of scene modes and creative modes to use. If you just set the mode dial to scene mode, you'll find that you're given 23 scene modes to choose from, and if you just head into the creative modes, there's an endless list for you to choose from. However, one of our most favourite uh, creative modes that we've used on test just during this first on hands-on look review is the dynamic monochrome mode. It gives a really punchy, nice kind of contrast, high contrast effect to black and white images. The Panasonic Lumix GX7 will be sold in various different forms with different lenses. 
this 20mm pancake lens will be sold with the camera for £999. Alternatively, you could buy it with the 14 to 42mm kit lens for £899. The camera will also be sold body only and that will cost £819. The camera will be made in two colours. There will be this black version, but there will also be a very desirable silver version for those that fancy a slightly different colour. When we arrived here at Longleat today, Panasonic claimed that the GX7 is the best compact system camera that they've ever made. And from our first impressions and this first hands-on, we've got to agree it's a pretty impressive compact system camera. It's slightly larger than I expected, but the handling is absolutely superb and the performance, well, it can't really be faulted. We're really looking forward to getting our hands on a full review sample. This is only a pre-production model, so make sure you check back to whatdigitalcamera.com for the full review very soon.